Three, two, wait, that's one. Oh, look, the kid's here. I don't have to count myself in. We're going to let the kid do it. Kid, Three, count us down. Two, one. Paint the sky your favorite color. There we go. <laughs> Welcome to the program. Welcome to the show. That is a line that I stole from Andy Hunter. I am your host. I am not Andy Hunter. I am Mark Goldberg, and I've got quite a cast of characters with me today uh, who I will introduce momentarily. But if you are watching this show live, thank you for joining us. This is a live stream. If you are joining us after it has posted up to YouTube, um, well, you're, there's going to be a whole lot of silliness, shenanigans, hijinks, and, uh, and other matters that you may wish to skip. And if you find yourself in that scenario, then you can just scoot this video ahead three, four, five minutes to get into the serious watch talk. Right, Clyde? There's going to be some serious watch talk today, don't you think? Well, should they swipe left or swipe right? You know, that just depends on if you like what you see here, <laughs> you know. Mm. And uh, mm. if you would subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. If you, would, if you don't want to do that, well, I can't hardly blame you because this is going to be a bit of a mess. So, guys, right over here is the rancher. Uh, that is Clyde Anderson from the Watch Wrangler channel. Say hello to the people, Clyde. What? Thank you very much, Clyde, for your cooperation. Below me is uh, Silly the Kid McKenzie. Thank you for joining us, McKenzie. Hey, guys. And then, uh, McKenzie, your claim to fame is Archie Ate Your Noodle. Is that correct? Yes, this is yeah. uh, accurate. It is accurate. And then down there in the corner, can you believe I'm actually doing this? I'm, I'm kind of making this work. Bruce Williams from the Bruce Williams channel. And uh, thank you for joining us today, Bruce. Hey, thanks for having me in, man. It's awesome to be here. I'm, uh, I'm so glad that you're here. And uh, I would like to just clue the punters in on one little thing. Um, Bruce tends to have a little bit of equipment trouble. And uh, right before going on live, Bruce told me that today he had solved his problem and his phone would no longer be falling off the table because he had that nifty tripod, right? Yeah. And then you uh, you geared up, turned on the, turned on the phone, tripoded up. Joined us and what happened, to Bruce? I was like upside down. <laughs> he sideways. was, yeah. So I was gonna, I was telling everybody, you know, that whenever Bruce talked, you just would have to pick up and rotate your computers. But Bruce decided to save you the trouble, and um, so basically, you're propped up now against like three copies of Let Dogs Be Dogs that are stacked one on top of the other. Is that correct, yes. Bruce? Yeah, that excellent. is absolutely correct. Autographed copies. There I you go. Add. So From a people. Who who would that be? That would be you, oh, Mark shucks. Goldberg. So what's going to happen here, guys, is at some point during the show, okay, we're we're going to turn this into a shots game. All right. Every time every time Clyde uses the soundboard and says "but fuckers, but fuckers," indeed, you have to take a shot. Every time the kid says "hmm, hmm," you have to take a shot, and every time Bruce's phone falls off the table, you have to take two shots. You with me, guys? Hmm. Okay, that was a shot. So uh, let's say hello to the punters here. Oh, also, every time you send yes. Mark a uh, super chat, I've got a custom, uh, I've got a custom sound clip ready to go. Oh, that's I a, a fucking <laughs> Well, that is a good point. Thank you, Clyde. Uh, we do accept super chats on this channel. It is not necessary. We do we do some stuff for free. Uh, however, if you could decide to contribute to the dog food fund, we will appreciate it. Also, the bourbon fund. The dogs get the food. I get the bourbon. Geezer, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to, to you. you. Happy, happy birthday, dear Geezer. Geezer. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. And Geezer says he's born in 36 minutes. And, and uh, we're, we're not sure if that means that's precisely when he exited the canal or if he's in a time zone. <laughs> Wait, he's still in the womb as we're speaking. It's possible, you know, reaching a handout, trying to find, you know, like, you know, daylight. Unsure. Anyway, uh, happy birthday, geezer. Patrick Sue's blue shirt. Buddha and uh, Demachine with us. Demachine, how many watches have you picked up this week? Music Channel M3 and uh, a, a cast of other reprobates and characters who have no business being loose, such as uh, Cowboy Swami and, um, yeah, a few of you others, Craig or Grissom and some names that I don't know how to pronounce. Anyway, gentlemen, thank you so much for being with you. There are 55 of you at this time. And George, Jay. Well, Clyde. Super chat. Come on, Clyde. What happened, Clyde? I, a fucking <laughs> <laughs> I don't even understand what Archie is saying there. But thank you, Archie, for joining us. George, thank you for the $2. Just bought a an 
a a seven two nine two two B Blue Tutor ETA BB. That is a Black Bay, not a bareback people. And um, I uh, I don't know those reference numbers, but I have the the burgundy one of those, and I like it very very much. What would you pay, George? Those are um, those are terrific, I think, because they have the little smiley face. And I I know that uh, Bruce, you've reviewed that watch like seventy or eighty times, right? Yeah, I love that watch. The ETAs are awesome because they're thinner. The the in houses, man, they are tall, tall watches. So, yeah, that's a great pickup. I think even the even that one with the ETA. What's that, Glidesy? Twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred is what he paid. Oh yeah, no, that's a great price, especially if it's box yeah. and papers. Yeah, that's yeah. very good. That's what I paid. I've 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 purchased twice now. Um, don't sell it, George. You, you may find yourself eventually bored with it, and then you're going to sell it. But if you do that, like a year later, you will rebuy it, <laughs> which is what I did. So, Bruce, are you the king of the rebuys? I or do you I am, never look only back? With like Seikos, I, I bought the mm. Marine Master three different times, and I'll probably do it again, and I'll probably sell it again. So, yeah, I, I know I, I know the feeling definitely. Now, Bruce, you sold me a... Um... Wait, wait. You're asking him a question, and yes. then you're letting him finish the question before you ask him another question. What's mm. up with that? Have you forgotten where you came from? Yes. Well, go ahead, counselor. You know, dig right in there. You can cross-examine. Feel free to treat the witness as hostile. So, okay, so Bruce, um, yeah. what do you think about the watch? Which one? The the, the Black Bay? Yes. So I mean, I, I'm, I'm not huge watch, in the in-house... About? Version, but the ETA watch? ones I really like. Bruce, tell me what you think about it. Come on, tell me what you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going for here, Clyde? Are you, you, know, doing you a... know the blue. The blue is cool because it has the white tone loom, mm. which the other two versions don't. And it wasn't yeah. the. I mean, I don't know. I, I really think George did good with his uh, twenty five hundred. What do you think purchase. about Corvettes? <laughs> Oh, I see what you're doing here. You're doing Archie Tourette's syndrome. So, but you know, poor Bruce. Bruce is like an innocent bystander. Don't don't let Bruce become. Uh, you know, don't let Bruce get hit by shrapnel and become collateral oh, damage. Mark, there are no innocents on this. <laughs> no, that's this channel. There are okay. You you mistake this channel, sir, for the like for the answer. for the Minotaur channel. Um, oh dear, Mister C. Super chat. Dollar. Thank you ever so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I was going to say, though, Bruce, is that I bought that uh, when I was young, tender and inexperienced. You had your way with me on a sale. You sold me an Avenger 2 Breitling and a, oh, um, you know, and I, I kept it for a very long time, loved it. But it was one of those watches that I just like I would put it on and within two hours I got the hunger for something else. And so it, it lived in the safe constantly. And um and then I sold it, and now it's a year later, and I'm in the process of like watching them constantly on eBay. And no, to, yeah, like I, it might end up being a rebuy. And I, I, I just think that I, I that, but they went up a little in price, and I need to find somebody like bailing out of it hardcore. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, especially like the blue one. You sold me the black, which I liked, but the blue one looks kind of cool. I no, might know no. someone that, that wants to sell the blue one, actually. So, hmm. Well, if he feels like getting anally fisted, you have him call me. If he's a good friend of <laughs> yours, don't send him my way, or he'll be mad at you when I'm done, when I'm done with him. All right. <laughs> right Clyde. Now, Booster is wanting to know if he's banned. I'm thinking... If Booster's we not banned ban here. But not if yet. we ban him, people will pay to unban him. Well... So there. Busso, you're not banned, but if you would like to be, please super chat, you know, like two dollars and you know we can we can ban you, but <laughs> no, you're not. no Busso, you and I are good, you know. Fist to the people, hail to the people. So everybody can see your comment, therefore. Anyway, yeah, so like I like that little ETA. Now, um yeah, I, I sort of am thinking about I'm like the king of the rebuy, right? So the that the the Burgundy Black Bay is a rebuy for me, but um when I sold it and bought it back, I bought it back cheaper than I sold it. <laughs> so that's the way wow. to do this. Yeah. I love when that happens. I, and, flipped, I flipped the burgundy as well. And every, I bought back the 58. And did you get, oh uh, yeah. Well, if you brought the 58, then you probably pay, you know, you probably, uh, you upgraded, you paid a little bit more. I'm thinking, right? Yeah. 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 But how do you feel about that 58 compared to the black bay? Cause it's uh it's a little bit smaller and it's a little bit thinner, isn't that right? Yeah, I think the proportions are absolutely perfect. 
but you're you're like you know little and skinny and you're like five feet four inches tall very few people know this but you know but the, the kid is like basically three inches too tall to be considered a little person but he's but you're tiny right mm, no <laughs> <laughs> drink. everybody take a drink <laughs> you can't say have you had your insane measured <laughs> No, but, but but you got a little skinny wrist. I know this from pictures. So maybe that um, you know, maybe that uh, fifty eight looks perfect on your chicken bone wrist. But I have a big, broad, manly, flat yeah. wrist bone here. So who, the uh, the black bay looks who, good on me. But who Mark, has what are you wearing? What what, what watch you got on today? I am wearing what might just be the actually perfect. Why is this not my daily, everyday, one and done perfect watch? Is the red line Sea Dweller. Look at the proportions of that. Look at that. Look at that manly wrist bone. No little fifty-eight for me, with its little scrawny thirty-nine millimeters. We're going for a full-blown forty-three. What do you think, guys? Can I pull this off? No. It looks good. <laughs> Glad you're such a contrarian. No, I'm not. Okay, guys. Well, uh, anyway, so um, but what I especially like about the Tudor ETA version is the smiley face. I don't like the straight line of text on the in-house model plus as as uh, bruce points out the uh, it's thicker too so i personally prefer uh, that eta version hardcore so but i did another rebuy today today i have purchased yet another rebuy i'm trying to rebuy that um that avenger 2 in blue but i'm looking for somebody that i can you know use abuse and put away wet what'd you get today dude well you not you are actually already know but let me let mm. me find a picture here we go hold on i'm gonna find it where is it? You know, it's it's new watch day all around because I bought a watch today as well. Ooh, what did you get? <laughs> well, well, I'm digging. I, I bought a Seamaster. Oh, yeah. that's right. That well, yeah. do you 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 care to reveal? You know, there's a Seamaster. There's like you know, 15, 20 years worth of Seamasters. Which so yeah, I bought the latest version with the ceramic wave dial, mm -hmm. but Laser I went with dial. the one that everybody does not like, uh, the silver, the, the chrome version. Ooh, so, uh, Mark had that one. I like I, that. Yeah, one. I did. I'm, I'm excited. It should get here on Wednesday, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Well, very nice. I we discussed that before you made the purchase, and and I really do like that watch, Bruce. Um, are gonna, oh are yeah. Gonna, are you gonna pull up the watch and show it to us? Me? Yeah. Oh, Bruce. Oh, uh, I don't have a device to. So I, it I do. the watch you're looking at. Me. It yes. took me. It took me a minute to find it. Yeah, I am. It took him. It took him twenty six point two miles to find that. <laughs> it totally did. It's and it's sideways, but if I turn it, because it's you know it's, it's gonna, a marathon. Yeah, it's a it's a marathon jumbo day date. This thing is like forty six, forty seven millimeter. It's big. It's it's really big. Clyde, you, what is that? Clyde? Thanks for the background music. Yeah, don't do background music because it could be copyrighted and it causes a problem. Oh, look, I'm sure the Avengers thing is totally not copyrighted. Yeah, I'm sure it is. So you can't do that. Um, okay. So anyway, the it's the uh, it's the jumbo day date, um, and I sold it. You know, those things retail for like sixteen hundred, and you you can find them discounted for like maybe thirteen, fourteen hundred. But I managed to get it for seven hundred and seventy five dollars. But I'm gonna to have to fix the bezel. The guy says it's free spinning, so the uh, little bezel clip. It, don't do that, Clyde. I'm serious. You you can't play that. Don't don't do that. Uh, it, it the last time I had that any copyrighted music appearing in the background, I got a nasty gram from YouTube and they pulled the video. So don't do Ooh. it. Yeah. Um, okay. So, Archie, but Archie's videos. Got it. Good yeah. idea. <laughs> well, that now that that I stand behind. Um, <laughs> Dun, and, uh, da, da, dun, dun, I think you. Dun, yeah, dun. I think humming. I don't think humming is illegal. Anyway, so that's my giant thing. Now, Bruce, let me find the one that you got, um, and uh, let's hold that up unless the kid can find it first, because you know he accused me of being slow. You got it, Grandpa. Well, you, right. want, <laughs> you want him to? You want him to pull your? Pull your... Never mind. Okay. So, Bruce. Last time we were talking, you were looking at the black and white uh, Seamaster. Yes. What yeah. what made you choose the Chrome instead? You know, uh, there's there's something about the least popular version. Just looks a little bit more attractive to me. You know, everyone's buying the white and the black, the all black. 
Uh, but yeah, I, I dig that one a lot. I think it's going to be really dynamic. So, so actually, I got to thank Mark because I was chatting with him and he sent me an email of the guy that he bought his from, Exquisite Timepieces, and uh, they were awesome to work with. So we had they a good experience. Up? They are in that again? Naples, Florida, exquisitetimepieces.com. You want to get a hold of Nick over at exquisitetimepieces.com. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think that Bluefish does a lot of stuff with him as well. He's, mm-hmm. in, he's in Naples. Yeah, Bluefish is a guy who lives in that area, so he just you know borrows stock um, you know, from, from... Anyway, those are great people. And that watch, Bruce, although it is not an especially popular dial, it is a very hypnotic dial. Like... It yeah. changes so much in the light, just depending on the way the light hits it. It's constantly looking different. And um, I know that the pop uh, of blue on the dial and everything. Yeah, this is going to be a really fun watch to, to play now, with. Craig Grissom is asking, what color is the bezel insert? It's blue. blue. Yeah. Have another look here, Grissom. That is, uh, that is blue. BLU blue. I think he has the same watch pulled up as his avatar. Is one of, I think the point he's getting to. Mm. He's mm. also wearing the silver on the new James Bond movie poster. Oh really? That's the nice. coming one. Yeah. Beautiful, nice. So I think you'll enjoy that. Um, I know I did. I think the reason that I sold it was because, um, like, I I don't know, man. If if something doesn't get used like a whole lot and it goes into super occasional rotation, it's okay with me if its price point is sort of like, you know, under $2,000. But if I've got a $3,000, $4,000 watch that just isn't getting worn very much, I get nervous that like maybe I should change that up for something that I'm going to use. And in the case of that Omega, I got a little bit worried that, um, you know, it might tank in value. But I, I don't. I don't think they're tanking in value, and uh, that I, I know that iteration is not very popular. So if you go on eBay, there are plenty of that one available, or um, actually Chrono, Chrono. Everyone's dumping that one, but I, I actually think it's the most visibly attractive. It's the most striking dial. You got to be a little brave to wear it, but it is beautiful. Yeah, I'm going to well, get the rubber strap for it as well for the summer. Nice. Uh, I know, I know Mackenzie was saying that's the way to go in the summertime. For awesome sure. strap. Yeah, I love it. Good. Well, kid, you have one. Which one Which one do you have? And I maybe you the, could uh, the blue. show the blue us doll. that. Yeah, you have some really good pictures of that. Go ahead and find one of your pictures and you know, fire that up and, and show yeah. us. I think you and Mark need to – I think, Mackenzie, I think you and Mark need to do a wrist off. Mm. How would nice. that, what would that look like, Clyde? What, what, what is a wrist off? Sounds hey, a little dirty. It'd be both of you guys showing your wrist to each other, letting the audience post on which wrist. Which of us, who has the sexier wrist? Yes. Uh, you know, I don't want to embarrass the kid. <laughs> so, Clyde. Um, One sec. Well, Mackenzie is digging away there. Clyde, go ahead and um, Cl- Clyde, go ahead and tell us about um, about any new acquisitions, because that, that's the first thing that Archie will ask you when you get on there. Is so, Clyde. What's new? What are you going to buy? What's you know? What's coming next? Nothing. Mm. Let's see. Let's see if I can. How do I do this? Yeah, leave it like that. No, I don't want it like this. I'm trying to make Mackenzie the top dog, just so. <laughs> I, I don't know. You've kicked him out of the picture entirely. <laughs> I have. Okay, hold on. He's back. <laughs> I wish I knew how to use this. Try just clicking on his icon. Oh, see that, Clyde? You're so smart. This way, when he comes up live. We'll we'll see that uh, we'll see that we'll see the picture. His is very nice and it looks great in bright sunshine. Kid lives in Florida, and um, so it does look really nice. And Fuck um, <laughs> take a shot. Anyway, so Clyde, you've got no plans, eh? Nope, no plans, no hopes, no dreams. Mm-hmm. I've been on the channel for shattered, years. shattered. So Clyde, you know, as the situation slowly seems like it might start to resolve. There we go. Yeah, there it is. Pretty. It's and, it's on, and you have it on the strap, right? Yeah, I got it on the rubber. But see, the thing is, is that in this light, it looks blue, black. So that's why I wanted to see your picture. Yeah. There you go. Because when you, when you see it in the light, like, look at the difference between it and... Yeah, it looks almost black and in, yeah. uh, indoors. But outdoors, boy, does that pop. Really, really pretty. Now, also, show us your wrist. No, he's gone. So um, the all right. Wait, how do I get him off of there? There we go. Oh, so, oh, oh. <laughs> it's better. 
I don't know, Clyde. With you, you know, I, I don't. I don't think the kids should be flashing body parts unless we can see you. Um, you know, now that is an attractive risk. You have to- <laughs> Jesus, Clyde. <laughs> no. Keep it on long enough for Mark to do a screen grab. Clyde, could you just talk really slow right now? <laughs> anyway, that looks very nice. I have the black one, and I have it uh, on um, on factory stainless, but um, but no. I, I have an aftermarket black you know rubber that looks exactly like the you know. Now, would like, you say the black one looks bigger? God damn it! I was about to say that. <laughs> You know, the two of you are naughty. Both of you are punished. Go to my room. That would be rude. Um, so go to my room. We'll talk about this later. The um, The reason that I sold the Chrome was because I got nervous about the money. Then I bought the reason that I bought the black was um, I felt like it was a little bit more mainstream, even though I probably would have preferred the blue. But um, the black became available. A friend of mine was selling it. Thank you, Bill, for selling me that beautiful black one for $2,900. So for that, that sum of money, I just I couldn't. I just couldn't pass up twenty nine hundred dollars, <coughs> and uh, it also came with the blue strap. Yeah, and they just raised their price to I think forty two retail. No, fifty two. Fifty two. Yeah. Fifty two. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, well, they picked the right time to do it, huh? And uh, well, no, they didn't just do it, Clyzy. They did it before Corona. Um, they did that like at, uh, like about six months ago. So, um, yeah. Wait. So they know what's coming. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Well, Clyde, I bought something else. And I think everybody on this panel knows the other thing that I've bought. But, um, you know, Breitling came out with some new releases. Which, which, of them do you think the, which of them do you think that I would be buying? No way. You got that? You got the rainbow yeah. one? That is so awesome. The Holy rainbow. Shit. Yeah, I, I, have, I have purchased the rainbow. Now, the thing is, is that... The um, this comes in several different iterations, all of he which. also bought this. Yeah, no, I didn't buy that yet. <laughs> Hold on, I'll give you the. Oops, you're gone. There you go. Now that's <laughs> that. That's not a. Um, that's not a Breitling strap. That's an Omega strap, right? Yeah. Mm. So LGBT, the B stands for Breitling. <laughs> Maybe you know, I don't, you know, I don't know. But like, okay, this is limited edition. This is limited to two hundred and fifty pieces. Now, all the other iterations, I think there's a black one, a blue one, and then a two tone one. All the other iterations of this are not limited editions per se. They're uh, how did they call it? Limited time editions, which means they won't tell you how many pieces they're going to make. They won't tell you how long they're going to make them. But they're making them for a limited time, whatever, whatever that means. You know what I think that means? Mm. I, I think that means they're going to see how well it sells. It doesn't yeah. sell well, it's yeah. done. Go on, it sells right? really well, they're going to make more. But like they could, they could make it, like, listen, the average Breitling product, they turn them out for like a, a solid five years before. And they've got some watches that they've been making various iterations okay. of for way longer than that. So, Mark, let me ask you yeah. one very simple direct question. Yeah. Why did you buy the watch? Oh, it's beautiful. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's beautiful. That's why I bought it. Yeah. That is the correct answer. Yeah, because listen, okay, the fact that it's 250 pieces and maybe, maybe, maybe we'll hold it. What are we looking at there? It's uh, That's how thin it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, George Kern, like their CEO, yeah, yeah. did okay, the uh, right. like virtual release. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece. Um, it, it's 9.9 millimeters thick and 42 millimeters across the bezel. So it's very thin, but it has tremendous wrist presence. What movement does it use? It uses a modified, uh, it's an ETA movement, Clyde Z, um, but they've uh, modified and regular. Like the Breitling 7 or something, right? Well, that's really kind of baloney, though. Honestly, it's an ETA movement, and it is, uh, but it's it's chronometer spec, so it's going to. Well, going to keep good time yeah and the thing is you have to i think brightly you have to buy it out of love anyway and well I yeah, have to admit yeah that model does look fabulous <laughs> fabulous and uh, <laughs> in a little bit i'll show you guys the loom it has pretty you know has pretty pretty fun crazy loom um the um 
So in th what they're saying is they're limited time releases, not limited editions, but they're limited time. So basically, they could make hundreds of thousands of those you know, in one, two, three years. Nobody knows. But the one that I showed you is limited to 250 pieces. Now, all of them cost right around $4,800 with the exception of that piece that I showed you, which is like five thousand dollars so it's just a couple hundred dollars more for that super super limited piece I a fucking huge so it's only uh it's only 250 pieces so i don't know if it'll hold its value it's not killer to me either way but you know okay. maybe, maybe I, I, i'll get lucky i wasn't going to come on archie tonight yes you are well, you got to come Clay. come on well okay let me rephrase that i was <laughs> not going to enter archie no wait no that's you weren't going to were you going to appear Yes, I wasn't going to appear on Archie Luxury tonight, but I might have to just to watch you and tell him that. Bruce, what do you think of that loom? That is so dang cool. I I'm pumped for you, man. That that's a great pickup. Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. You wear I, that with pride. <laughs> <laughs> to, to your house. <laughs> sorry, okay. sorry, okay. Heather. I'm going to take a cigarette break. Uh, <laughs> he has got this covered, guys. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's beautiful. And um, so, look, I don't know. Bruce, what do you think my chances are of that particular piece, limited to a 250 edition holding value? Has Breitling done anything else? I think they have, but I don't know what, with with that few pieces. They don't do a lot, but what do you know? Not, not that I can recall off the top of my head. So I mm. think just the sheer low number, You, I think you're going to be safe with the five thousand dollars in that watch I, I really do i wonder if they're still available kid maybe see see if see if they'll let you add one to I your i just added it to my cart yeah so i that it either there's a problem with the breitling website or uh or nobody wants these <laughs> and i personally seven versions one out of 250 well that could be that's another possibility i personally believe that they should not have any problem finding 250 gay men to purchase this watch or or women you know even here's Clive, a get you know, no clive's not back yet clive's very very busy and this is the range of straps i got that bracelet that mesh because naturally that would be the most expensive thing to purchase second hand in the aftermarket well, i think that that mesh looks sweet how it's fitted how it's mm -hmm. thin yeah and that works really well with the model in my opinion yeah but look at all these other ones like look at that orange one which will come back yeah. around again tell me what you think of the orange one God help you, Mark. I there we go yeah, but those are yeah, I like the orange one. yeah yeah they are a little expensive what, what's that glidesy i hate to say it but that's one that, that was the one that really caught my attention as well well blue shirt buddha says i'll get to keep having my five thousand pieces my five thousand dollars <laughs> <laughs> you know i'm not entirely sure but uh but you know i hope so if not i'm not too worried about it that i i feel like that particular watch is, is a keeper um it is a reissue by the way of a their 1957 uh super ocean okay so it they're calling it the the 57 and the case back let me show you let me see if i have a picture of the case back it's very cool I don't. Oh yeah, here I do. Here's the. Here's the. A fucking huge. Like Manzer, like Mr. C. Super chat. Five dollars. The the Black Bay in house has only been out for a few years. The ETAs have been out much longer. That is true. If the Black Bay Fifty Eight adds more colors, might they discontinue the larger Never. Black Bay? No. What, what, well, that's a good question. What do you guys think? I don't think so. That, that, no, I don't I, think so either. Mm, they're going more. Think, they're going more in house. I, I yeah. can see happening of that. It's also their way of trying to edge Tudor up a little bit. I mean, I'm getting some hellish feedback on somebody. Yes. Well, that it's only you, you, you. I don't know. Is any just everybody take a look on your app and see if you have your YouTube open? If so, turn down your. But it doesn't have that big delay, Clyde, so I don't know if it's you. You can always come out of the stream and hop, pop back in. I don't think so. I, Mr. C, I don't think so, and I'll tell you why. Mark, because I don't know if I want to come out on your stream. <laughs> well, do you know, listen, Clyde, it's never too late. I I'm said I'd like to watch, God damn it. That's I'm, as good as I'm going. I'm living, proof. <laughs> I'm living proof. It's never too late. Guys, if you'd like to ask a question um, or uh, interact with me, you can do that at markgoldberg8 at gmail.com. Clive, watch Wrangler at gmail.com. Did I get that right? Is for Clivey. 
Yes. And uh, Bruce, what's your email if people want to get a hold of you about watch-related material and your channel? WilliamsBruce0008 at gmail.com. Almost, but not quite, 007. Yes. And then, uh, kid, you basically want everybody to leave you alone. Is that correct? Yeah, pretty much. Are you sure you don't want to give us like you know, your home address right now? Mm. No. Okay. No worries. Um, if you would like to uh, buy the kid, uh, you know, a glass of beer or a soup for Archie to eat, send me the money and I'll make sure that he gets that. Um, okay. So, you know, uh, here's the case back of that nope. Breitling. And hey, what you'll see is it says, send, yes, Clyde. Send me an email. <clears throat> Be prepared to get a personalized response from Chris Hansen. <laughs> He's well over 21, Clyde. Well over 21. One of 250. So they're not numbering them per se. Um, but it will certainly be clear that you're getting a very limited release, one of only 250 pieces in bass relief. Okay, so that's kind of cool. So um, yeah, that watch is amazing. I, I think so too. And the, uh, the the bezel is concave. It's like conical. It's it's like this. Like you could literally use it. You could hold soup in it. You could hold soup in it, or you could use it like an ice cream scooper. You know. Mm. Now, Bruce, I was telling you about this guy. Bagnanza? Oh, Bagnanza. Thomas. I made a fucking huge mistake. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas Burnett, for the 99 pence super sticker. Thank you ever so much. Um, I haven't used a pence since I've been in London, and, and it, it, it cost me 5p. See, you see, the, they call the pence p. It cost me 5p to p in Victoria Station, which is, like, really quite crazy. Um Okay, I want to go back and I want to read you an email that we read on a stream a, a few days ago, maybe a week ago, and it's kind of long. You can really tell one day really just goes into the other. I mean, it does. It's they're all blending to get COVID, COVID, COVID twenty. Thank you, twenty twenty. Giant smack in the face here. Um, okay. Anyway, um, we had a little bit of fun with this guy, so let me just recap his email to me uh, and his name was Mitch and he he wrote me back on the 10th of, of uh, April today being the 20th. Mark, I've been a fan for some time. Enjoy your videos, your personality and your wit, although I'm not sure he enjoys my wit anymore. And I too am an animal lover. Sorry to see that you hurt your arm, yada, yada, yada. I'm a new collector, love Rolex. He has an Explorer 214270, my daily driver. Love the watch, versatile, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I hope to get a Submariner date. And I've been on the waiting list for over six months. Hope to get the call soon. Well, I hope that the AD is open soon and that you get your new watch, Mitch. I own four luxury Rolex timepieces. Given the current state of affairs, my wife insisted I not wear them. This is the, this is where it got interesting, guys. To recap, he, he's got four he's got four Rolexes, but his wife won't let him wear them. So apparently, they're both crazy. Um, they say the disease is spread through droplets of infected saliva that is transmitted from a healthy person, for, transmitted from a sick person to a healthy person, yes, and that those droplets can stay active for up to several days on stainless steel. Well, Didn't we do this one? Yeah, 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 I, we did. That I, uh -oh. Have you not been listening, uh -oh. Billy the Kid? Have you got a fucking problem with your logger? We're we're reviewing for the for the punters. You know, there's 112 people in the room now, right now, and probably not all of them heard this. And there's a follow up to this. That's the point here, kid. Okay, um, so uh, it, it, so the droplets could could the, could stay active for up to several days on stainless steel. All of his all my watches are stainless steel or Rolexes oyster steel. And the date just is steel and gold. So the virus can stay on my watches for a long time. Well, again, you know, this is what we said. If you just if you just wash your watches like you wash everything else, you know, these days especially, you know, should be fine. And, you know, the Rolexes are waterproof. So can't be a problem here. This virus killed by, like, just about anything from hand sanitizer to soap to, you know, vodka, which, you know, pretty much means that my breath could kill a virus right now. I don't constantly touch my body or my watch through the day, not a huge concern, but I touch the watch to wind it. So winding my watch seems like a risky endeavor during the COVID-19 outbreak, and I need a safer alternative as I'm over 60. So essentially, he was afraid to wind his watch, you know. I know I'm not the first person to worry about this. Oh, yes, Mitch. Yes, you are. Oh, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. 
So I'm wondering what others are doing with their mechanical watches during the pandemic. How, what are you personally doing, Mark? Well, I just don't wind my watches anymore, and I have no idea what time it is. This thing hasn't been running in weeks. Quick <laughs> you know? fist watch check. <laughs> Quick fist watch check, but uh, I have no, what, no idea what time it is. My solution is to put them all in a safe place until the pandemic is over. And buy a quartz watch. <laughs> that does not need to be wound because it's specifically the winding that is the problem. Beautiful Doxa, and uh, I love the, I love your squally there, Bruce. Love the squally. Oh, thank you. That's <laughs> actually a Steinhardt. No, it's not. That is a Hulk, sir. <laughs> I'm just teasing. That is a Hulk. So that tells us that you are still in the honeymoon phase. Honeymoon phase. Or... Yeah. Heck yeah. And of course, the Seamaster comes. The, the, well, and then you will you'll I take it off. I don't like, yeah, I don't know. It'll, you'll be back and forth. And uh, the kid and I are wrestling right now because silly the kid and I both have that orange doxa. We are both super in love with our doxas, but we are both sort of having hunger pains for the turquoise dial, aren't we, kid? Mm -hmm. So we're like in this mutual support group where every day we talk each other out of, you know, don't buy that fucking turquoise. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Clyde, of course, the enabler. You know, Clyde. Clyde's an AA, but he's nobody's sponsor because he's the kind of guy who says do it right at a meeting, <laughs> right? Right, Clyde. <laughs> That's exactly right. Oh, I haven't been to a meeting in two months because. <laughs> <laughs> okay, aren't you guys doing Zoom? Yeah, uh, yeah. It's see, like that is freaking gorgeous. That I is just, cool. My heart just stood still for a second. That is killer. phenomenal. I, I had no idea how gorgeous that watch is. <laughs> All right, Clyde. <laughs> Clyde. That is that is breathtaking. Clyde, go stand in a corner. You don't even like that watch, Clyde. We know you. I don't like it. Absolutely stunning. What you think? <laughs> yeah, and then this the second he buys the second we the second one of us buys that, Bruce, he's gonna be like shitter, shitter. Like oh, buy that yeah. shitter. Oh sure. <laughs> you know. So uh, back to Mitch's uh, back to Mitch's uh, IQ issue. My solution is to put my four Rolexes away and buy a quartz watch that does not need to be wound. This would be much safer, don't you think? Which luck <laughs> this is the part that got me. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry. Yes. Guys, we've been on for 30 minutes. If you'd like for us to stay on another 30 minutes. Oh, we're going to do it anyway, Clyde. <laughs> chat, $25. Well, that wouldn't be a bad $25. idea. Look, it has a very nice clasp. Show us, kids, show us how that clasp, uh, you know, has micro adjustments. Look, see that? You got, That's awesome. You, got like, you get like five millimeters of ratcheting micro adjustment on that. And it's a beautiful beads of rice. Super comfortable, brawny, but like. Hey, look, I'm Tim Masso. It's pretty. <laughs> no you are you are definitely not you are not articulate oh, wait, enough I didn't sir. sell you the watch sorry that's true plus you don't have your sunglasses on top of your head and you're not using so many five dollar words mm. so mitch wanted to know of the following you know luxury quartz timepieces which would be the safest in the covid crisis um the breitling aerospace evo the omega seamaster uh, which of those two? Anyway, so uh, as you people may remember, or if you weren't here, like Silly the Kid who wasn't paying attention, you know, Bruce, we gave Mitch a little bit of a hard time. I mean, I do cherish my, I do cherish my email. Thank you for sending me this mail, Mitch, to markgoldberg8 at gmail.com. But have you got fucking mental problems? Have you got <laughs> problems with exactly so anyway we, we we might have accidentally burlesqued mitch a little bit and we're and 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 he heard that and and i got the following beautiful email response from him hi again mark <laughs> i watched your live stream last week and i was happy you read my letter well i'm glad mitch that you took it in good spirit i'm not sure that you speak english though so maybe you didn't understand what we were saying i hope you weren't i hope i hope you I hope you were just being your charming self for entertainment purposes and not overly serious with your treatment of me. <laughs> I think I have the answer to his problem. <laughs> Go ahead, Clyde. You, you take can't your hands when you're holding <laughs> someone else's tackle. You're in sterile. Did you know that? Why don't you drink it then? You can. Gandhi did. So see, Master Bruce. Yeah, that, that is, that's awesome. I like it even more now. Oh, Hold on. on, let me let me make it big because I can't quite see. This means that Ving actually made the oh. sign. Congratulations, Ving. Mm. Mm. Very nice. Okay, so uh, <laughs> uh, 
here we are. Back to Mitch. Um, I hope that you were just being your charming self for entertainment purposes and not overly serious with your treatment of me. Well, you know, Mitch, I, I'm never overly serious, and I love you, man. Thank you for being with me. Um, love you, man. I can certainly take a joke. <laughs> then there's like 18,000 words here about how this is not funny. <laughs> I, can, <laughs> I can certainly take a joke. Um and actually did a bit of stand <laughs> I could certainly take a joke and actually I did a, a bit of stand-up comedy in my high school days <laughs> and at the senior talent show and at the county f- <laughs> he, he's got to be trolling you he's got to be trolling sure. you and at the county fair well first of all I'm in my 60s also and can I just say, I don't even remember senior high school. I mean, that, <laughs> like, that is so long ago. I don't even remember it. So um, anyway, I'm glad that you did the stand up. And uh, apparently I'm, I'm also glad that you found a, you know, some other productive career, you know, probably. Um, there must be some things you remember from like <laughs> senior high school, like the Kennedy assassination or something. <laughs> no, Clyde, it was the invention of electricity that I, that I mostly remember. And, uh, you know, voting for you for prom king when I was a junior. So I was laughing along with everyone and really appreciated the distraction from this dangerous existence that we find ourselves in. I want to update you on what I decided to do with my luxury Rolex collection. My four-piece hunger buster, if you will. LOL. He put the lol in there so I would make sure to understand that that was a joke and that it was funny. All fun aside, have we had any yet? No. (laughs) I think you are missing the danger here. So I have decided to sell three of my luxury Rolex. He puts the word luxury in front of like every, you know, every time he says Rolex, he's got to say luxury. Oh, and Bruce, I'm getting a little bored with you because your phone has not fallen down once. No punter has had to do a double shot yet. Could you just like knock that? (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) You know, just like see if you can knock. Maybe if the kid shows his wrist again, that table will start hopping. (laughs) Oh, wait, sorry, that was mine. Um, I think you're missing the point. I've decided to sell three of my luxury Rolex timepieces because of this pandemic. Now, guys, if you're selling watches because you need your money, because you're out of work, or that is no laughing matter. And believe me, I, I you know... I'm not joking about that at all, okay? In fact, I feel for you. If this is a time when you need to convert you know, Rolex or any other luxury asset back into real money. I feel for you. I really do. And you should also contact him at Mark Goldberg at gmail.com. Well, if you do that, I will be happy to put your watch out on the greater, you know, yeah. If you, if you, if if you need help selling a watch, Clyde or I will help you do that. I'm sure Bruce, it's a, it's a good idea. Like the three of us could do that, but just publicize for the punter. So they don't have to pay those giant eBay fees. Heck yeah. Yeah. The gold in this luxury timepiece is not only less attractive to the virus, but if you know what really hits the fan, then having some gold would be a good idea. Okay. No, no, no. Actually, there's studies showing that uh, it's uh, bronze. Bronze is actually detrimental to the virus. So is that right? Yeah, Mitch, what sell gold, to, buy bronze. You, no, Mitch, what you need to do is you need to go on and take your gold watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it is true that uh, Don Haynes suggests we all buy cash at this time. Come on, kid, do your do your job. Super chat. Breaking Breaking. The answer. There we go. Uh, Jaime Y sends two dollars and he goes, "Here's a luxury super chat." Thank you, Jaime. It is that is a luxury chat. A luxury that, chat, indeed. Uh, that would be. No, it's, uh, it's I don't know. It's more it's, than luxury chat. Beagle looks like a gray beagle, except for it doesn't look like beagle color, but it looks beagle esque, doesn't it? What was that, Clydesy? That's only two dollars. That's more of an Archie luxury chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too funny. Anyway, the gold is not only less attractive to the virus, but if you know what really hits the fan, then having some gold would be a good idea. Yeah, because like you could pluck the little gold links out of your Jubilee bracelet and then melt them down into ingots, you know, and then trade it for like, you know, ramen soup. Um, Gold has always been a good hedge during economic times and can even be bartered in a worst case scenario, just like salt and spices, God forbid. LOL. 
except for he says God is spelled G-D, which is what really observant Jews do when they want to write the word God out. Why? Do you know why, Bruce? Do you know why that is? I'm not sure. Well, because if you were to write the word God, which is a holy word, the word itself is holy, and if you were to write it on paper, paper can be destroyed, but God is eternal. Oh. So you would never write the word God on anything that wasn't, you know. But the thing is, is that email, I think it's non-destructible. I think it's eternal. So I feel like you should be able to write God in email because who's going to destroy an email? My wife said I could keep one watch, and although it is not my favorite, it has the most antivirus properties. <laughs> Plus, it's partly solid gold, so duh. I reached out to Watchbox, who seems so professional and honest, and offered my other three luxury Rolex timepieces for sale. <laughs> this guy is a piece of work. I was the guy. I asked to speak directly to Brian Govberg, but apparently he was not available. Of course not. They insulate him. Oh, we're getting a phone call. All right, let's put that to voice. No, no, no. no. It's probably... it you know, we'll, talk, we'll talk amongst ourselves. It's probably a claim. Okay, Clyde, I'm going to give you plenty of time to talk amongst yourselves. I feel like this is going very long, and I want to wrap it up so we can get a little... No, you know, no, we're fine. Go ahead. You're all right? All right. So this guy wants to uh, demands to speak to Brian Govberg himself, but apparently he was not available because the, the goon squad, you know, protects him from the crazies. And uh, Watchbox offered me three fairly low prices for my... Clyde, you're... <laughs> so, oh, wait, I, I don't want to... Yeah, it doesn't show your phone number. When Clyde calls me, this is what I see. Okay. <laughs> now. Over or under 30 minutes to finish this question. So Clyde. When, take the, the over on that. The, so Clyde, the last time that you called me, I was, uh, I was in the shower. <laughs> Clyde, you're a dick. Okay. So uh, I, was in the, <laughs> I was in the shower. Can you hear me, Clyde? Because I want to tell you the story. Yes. I was in the shower, <laughs> and I'm like, soap it up, man. But when I'm in the shower, I have this like niche with, that holds like the shampoo. It's like this inset into the tile. And I usually just prop the phone up in there because it makes good you know, acoustics, and I can play you know, my Howard Stern or whatever, YouTube. I could just you know, play some music or something in the shower. <laughs> and all I know is it starts making noise, so I turn around to look at it, and you, there you are staring me in the face. <laughs> It was the creepiest, weirdest feeling, Clyde. <laughs> I, I like butt ass naked, scrubbing every nook and cranny, and there's Clyde <laughs> looking right at me. It was, you know, it was awesome. Okay, Clyde, uh, you behave yourself now. Um, okay, so uh, they gave me. They, they offered him very little money. Uh, knowing I should bargain a little, I said I would only sell the three pieces if I could trade. And they had two Hublot. I don't know. It just This just goes on and on. He did like the quartz Hublot that they offered him because he wouldn't have to wind it. And as you know, touching your watch to wind it will get, you know, is going to give you, uh, you know, cancer. I don't understand why Archie, AC3 in parentheses, always says that Rolex is like money in the bank. And this is the point where we're going to have group think and group talk in a minute. I don't understand why Archie always says that Rolex is like money in the bank as I lost quite a lot of money when selling my three pieces. But I do have a beautiful Hublot instead. So I guess he got the Hublot. And much more peace of mind because he's not going to get cancer from winding his quartz Hublot shitter now. No one could have predicted this pandemic, so the financial loss and the loss of my beloved luxury Rolex timepiece is understandable. I hope my AD calls me back soon to pick up the date, the, the Samariner date, as I have just enough cash now to buy it. And uh, I will, if if they do, he will put it away and hopes that we will all remain healthy and safe. So, guys, if you buy Rolex, are you guaranteed to keep having your five thousand dollars? What happens when you sell to a used dealer like Govberg or anybody else? What happens? Well, Clyde, you've always got a lot to say. You start. Um, well, it, right now we're in uncharted territories. So I kind of think everyone's talking about how the market's starting to go down, but dealers aren't really lowering their prices that much. What I suspect to happen if you... Um, 
sold it to someone like Dubberger, a reseller, they would uh, screw you to death on the uh, trading price. Mm. I think that's I think that's pretty accurate, Bruce. What do you think about resale on Rolex right now? You know, I look at my three Rolex models and uh, well, hold GMT on, you got the, two. Uh huh. The discontinued, but it's still holding value. Yeah. Uh, so you have King the is, Hulk, Sorry, go say say that again, Clive. You have the Hulk. Yeah, I've got the, got the Hulk. The Black GMT Master Two, and I have an Air King. Oh, really? Yeah. So, and of the three, the Air King is still almost at retail, which is sixty, I think sixty-two or sixty-four, pre-owned. Uh, it's still right around the high fives, low sixes right now. So. I think I think they're holding pretty steady at the moment. It's the ones that have the crazy premiums that are just kind of coming down a little bit, not a ton, but uh, yeah. So I, the, they're holding steady. When you look at well. the at the prices that the punters are paying for them, but if you have to sell them to a watch dealer, the yeah, watch dealer has to make his pound of flesh, doesn't he? He sure does. Yeah, you'll definitely take a bath contacting a big dealer. Uh, yeah. No doubt. So it was always, you were always going to lose value when selling to a watch dealer. And I mean, I actually made a video about this. You guys might look back, you know, things to know before you sell your Rolex. And um, the advantage of selling to Govberg was, for Mitch, uh, was, well, first, he wasn't going to get COVID-19 from winding his watches. <laughs> like that. That's completely crazy. But the, uh, but the, the, the only real advantage was, is that, Govberg is a is a known reliable factor, and so you're entirely safe sending thousands of dollars worth of watches to them on spec, having them examine them, and knowing that you're going to get your money. So it is a risk free transaction, and that is the benefit. Now the 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 cost of doing business with a really reputable gray market dealer like that is you're not going to get top dollar, top top dollar, and that's because they need to make margin. And why wouldn't they? They have to invest money. They have to service that watch. They have to clean it up a little bit and then take, you know, take a little bit of risk when they sell it. So, you know, you have to leave them. There. There's pros and cons. You will be deeply fisted, but at least you know their their nails will be well manicured. <laughs> that is one precisely beautiful way of putting it. And um, okay, you. now um, hmm, I have a unique question here, but it's a dog training question, so we'll. We'll save that for uh, for another so Mark, day. Yes, Mark. Let me say, do you think that guy's trolling you? That, I mean, it seems that email, the couple mm. emails you just read. Yeah, it seems like it's made up. What do you think? You know, um, Bruce, I would like to think he was trolling me, but the thing is, is that based on the email that you receive. Have you not discovered that there are some very, very unusual people out there in this world? I have. I'll Can't give you that. Want... Yeah, now? Like, I don't want to name names, but there are some people out there who are just not well, you know? They are not well. And I have had interaction, and, and I don't know why, but it seems like any association with Archie Luxury brings them out, you know? So I don't know. Maybe you're immune, but like I deal with some very unusual people who have. Um, so well, let's just say have, um, it it could be real, could be real. Okay. Hmm. Mm. Um, now, well, what's Mackenzie's response to this question? Mackenzie, take all the time. You need. Yes. Go what ahead. was that? <laughs> Mackenzie. What? What's your response to this? And take all the time you need to respond. About what price is dropping? No, no. All right, uh, let's. You got to rephrase the question for him, Clyde. You know the kid has a short attention span. <laughs> so the question is, you know, what should people expect to happen? Okay. Will you keep having your five thousand dollars if you Didn't buy? You Clyde, you're muffled. You know, get get out of the bathroom. Come on, come on, Clyde. Cough it up. Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Mackenzie, who has a nicer wrist? Oh, you or Mark? <laughs> no, Mark, how's your, what's your response to that? 
Anyway, Mackenzie, it, will you keep having your five thousand dollars if you sell to a watch dealer rather than a fellow punter? No, you're gonna take a a bat. You're gonna take a beating. And Mackenzie, when you're buying watches, are you like you know pleasant and really respecting the other punter, or are you going for you know like the biggest discount you can possibly weasel blood. out of? You know, yeah, you're going for blood. Going for the discount, probably. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Clyde. What did you pay for your uh, what did you pay for your your Breitling reissue, your heritage Navitimer? Uh uh. Oh, I like very cold about this. Yes. Did you ever release yeah, that I, number I paid exactly? Like yeah. You, you paid I what? You, I mean, you got times, but no, like no, you, I, I released it plenty of time. Yeah. You're you got more it. paying attention. You got, I, I know that. I know the number that you paid. I just don't want to say the number if if you hadn't released it. If you're okay, are you okay with me saying what you paid for that watch? It's a keeper. Go ahead. Clyde, you paid eight thousand dollars for that watch, which wasn't bad given that it was released under. at you paid under eight? What'd you pay? Yeah. What'd you pay? Seventy nine sixty. Oh wow! Which okay, is technically under eight. That's yeah, that's bad. true. Yeah, yeah. No, you did fine, but uh, especially plus because MSRP it, plus tag. Yeah, how much is MSRP, kid? Eighty six hundred plus. Right, tag, so, so over nine. Yeah, so Clyde did good, but kid, what did you pay for that self same watch? Six k. Right, Clyde, he beat your price by one thousand nine hundred and sixty dollars. So, you know, here's what that goes to show: you do not want to sell. A watch to a fellow collector because we are like we're brutal, <laughs> you know. We're, we're we are we are not. And the nice sad people. thing is, on a trade in, it's probably worth five. It's 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 hard. It's hard. It's softest. It's hard. Well, this is one of the reasons why it's very important that we buy watches right because we get bored with them quickly. We, you know, Bruce, how have you managed to not lose a fortune on watches? Oh, I I've, I've lost money <laughs> on watches. No doubt. Um, but I I don't mind losing a little bit just to experience just the various watches. Cause I you know, I get ad revenue from making videos. So I I kind of like to think it cancels out a little bit. You can offset it a little bit there. Clyde, I muted you just because I don't know what, what kind of background noise you got going on there, but give you a second. Unmute yourself when <clears throat> when you got that sorted out. Okay. Craig writes in I'll unmute Clyde because his avatar calm okay, down. Okay, ready. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Craig says, great channel. Enjoy it. Lo looking for a new date just white dial for my first Rolex. And it uh, doesn't seem like the prices are dropping on these watches. Would you expect to be able to get this watch under retail? If so, from whom? Now, I don't track date justs, but I don't think there's any white dial date just that is um, all that hard to get, but this is the date just 41 and that's kind of new guys. So what do we think in terms of pricing and acquisition on a, on a DJ 41? Well, he didn't say if he wanted a 36 or 41 or a smooth bezel or fluted bezel. Well, I got a reference number here. Let me give it to you. You ready? You could look it up. What Clydesy? I got a an oyster bracelet or two. Well, it? I have the reference number, so let me let me give it to the kid and kid. You put it in to the uh, magic of Google, and then let's see what it is. You can show us. You ready? Go ahead. One two six three zero zero dash triple zero six. So. Craig wants to know uh, what he should expect to pay for it. I don't know what it is either. So that's the problem. Really, the problem with Datejust is there are so many varieties, iterations, and variations of them that, um, you know, they are, there's just too darn many of them. And when you get into that number of iterations, the prices fluctuate a whole lot. That's so, the 41, Datejust 41 with Roman's white dial, smooth bezel, Jubilee. And what is the, that's a handsome watch. So it's a 41 and it is Roman's yeah. white dial. Smooth bezel. Mm. Jubilee. Clyde, what should you expect to pay for that? Did you find yeah. it on Chrono, kid? Yeah, I think it's around eight. It's listed for eight. And what's retail? I don't know what retail is, but that's probably under retail. So Craig, check yeah. Chrono 24, right, Clydesy? Sure. Well, where do you buy your date justs from, Clyde? You've you've bought you buy them from everywhere but the authorized dealer. 
No, actually, I got my Blue Roman from the authorized dealer. Well, that's a hard to get one. I'm a hard to get sort of guy. True. Craig, if I were you, I would go to Chrono 24. That's where I would start looking for that watch. So there's five listed on Chrono. The lowest is eight from a dealer. Okay. All the way up to nine. Nice. Oh, you got to watch what we're on. So if you really wanted it, I'd say just go to a dealer. See if you can get a little discount, maybe mm. 10%. Mm. And Clyde has recommended Watch Recon. Okay. Uh, now, this is a, this is an interesting... Let me just see. Uh, Mark, uh, this is from <laughs> Hank Bagnant. I don't think they're that low, but damn. Well, that might be a popular one, and that's the 41, and so I think those are a little bit rarer, the 41s. Bud to stud, $1.99, thank you. <laughs> six new complete white dial with roman numeral six so new mm, well can't how can it be six has to be someone over, grab that. has to be someone over. getting the fuck out so yeah yeah, yeah that, that, that's that puppy up sick that'd be that would be a, that would be a, a great price now guys out there in the audience there are 131 of you watching at this time thank you ever so much for being with me and um with my my panel of experts and friends i think it is um, very important that somebody if if the uh if archibald chesterfield the third begins the live stream somebody put it into the comments because clyde will be a attempting to convince me to rebel stream but uh, we're going to want to join the pontiff as soon as possible i'm available at mark goldberg eight at gmail.com mckenzie no, sure. mckenzie is available if you simply stalk him on social media show up in his backyard clive where can the punters find you if they'd like to talk to you? Um, on uh, the RT string, give me the finger. Good point. Or CliveWatchWrangler at gmail.com. And Bruce Williams, give us that 008 address again. No, Williams, Bruce, okay, 0008 at gmail.com. Do it again, Brucey, because you were interrupted by a minotaur stomper. Williams, Bruce, uh, 0008 at gmail.com. Oh, it's, it's triple zero eight. Yes. Man, complicated. All right. Very well done. Thank no, you. No, so actually, he's not starting for another 30 minutes, so we have 30 minutes left. Oh, dear God. Okay. Well, then we better keep, we, we better work our way through some more of these. No, mail. It's, it's, it's an hour. He's starting at 730. <laughs> yeah, I know you're lying to me, Clyde. <laughs> Why you do me like this? Why you do me like this, Clyde Z? Joe R says, 10 minutes until the holy stream. I'm not so sure that is true or it isn't true, but. Uh, but either way, um, that would that's fine um, because Mark Blosher loves the channel and gives us a thumbs up. Logan Hall confirms 10 minutes. Okay, good. Good to know. Somebody keep an eye on that because if he's posted that he's starting in 10 minutes, it could easily be 20. One never knows. Yeah. Also, snitches get stitches, bitches. <laughs> Too funny. Okay, Hank says, "Hi, Mark. Love your videos and love that Hulk. I am just wondering. Go ahead. Let's 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 ha let's have a look at a Hulk. Bruce, you got a Hulk. Show it off. Look at that. Beautiful. The problem with showing any Rolex watch, though, is that lack of any reflective coating. It makes it very hard to show depending on the light. God, that is a beautiful watch. It, now, it that's is. that's also one of the pristine. You're holding it upside down." <laughs> thank you sir don't drop it there we go oh that's, that's nice that's, that's one of the highly esteemed 2020 models right yeah it is march that's have, 17. that's going to have all sorts of collector value well we and think so on st patty's day and yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's what the card says right bruce it does yeah, yeah. my one authorized dealer actually let me uh put my name on it and all that stuff so so cool it's pretty cool yeah i'll give you i'll give you a you know like 10-5 for it. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually, if, if we have time to, we'll get to that email. There's, I have a few emails that are fun. Mark, in that, he said that, if, yeah. you, if you throw in your watch in 10-5, he'll take it. Oh, no. That, <laughs> well, okay. Wait. The marathon? The G-Shock, right? <laughs> no. Okay. So, uh, yeah. No, I know Bruce better than that. The man drives a hard bargain. Okay, Mark, love your videos. I am wondering if you think with the whole virus situation, it is a buyer's market for watches particularly on Rolex stainless. And now, would it be a good time to buy now or later? I know you mentioned in your video, but I wanted to get your thoughts again. So I'm going to start with you, Clive. Is this the time to buy Rolex steel sports? Are prices going down? 
I think they'll go down further. Uh, I, and you oh, mean the used like market? And you mean the used market, right, Clydesy? Yes. Nice. Kev I'm D. A fucking huge <laughs> Kev D gives us uh, five. Uh, those are Swiss francs or dollars. No fan of huge lugs slash bulky look on the new sub. Um, actually, they're going to change that. There are the, You're going to like the new sub better whenever they get around to announcing it in uh, next year. But love the ceramic bezel, which pre-case reference of Mariner, do you suggest while praying Rolex trims those lugs? Wait. Just wait. Don't buy anything. If you love oh, ceramic... Okay. Yeah, their next iteration is going to have a skinnier waist. And if he can't wait for that, the mm. Sea Dweller 4000, which is a 40 mil, the lugs are actually a lot more slim than the ceramic yep. sub. Good point. It's also, a little chubbier, though, isn't it? Also, yeah, it's thicker. Yeah, yeah but also made, that's what she said. also made for a very short amount of time as well. Yeah, yeah. so those are kind of collectible. Continued for sure. But um, it's, it's, a, that's a, it's a valid option. Showcase watches one I pound... Died. Fucking huge! 99p. 2020, we'll see Rolex hit 2017 pre-owned prices. Well, if the value of pre-owned Rolex dips, it's just a better buying opportunity for the rest of us. So, right. you know, be of, be of, be brave. You know, don't sell your Rolex unless you have to. This is more of a buying opportunity than a selling opportunity. I would say if you need to convert your Rolex into mortgage payments, okay, fine. You know, you, you do what you got to do. And bless your heart, if you're stuck in that situation and you need some help publicizing your watch to sell it, anybody on this panel would be more than happy to uh, yeah, to, but to, to help you do that. But Yeah, I think the bargains will come up on the less the slightly less desirable pieces. Like, say, for instance, the 2019 Hulk. <laughs> or the rainbow bright lane. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Thank, such a good point. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for busting my balls, the two of you. Um, okay, you hang on. One ball, mother. I would like to. Uh, well, uh, it is. I do. I have, tubes. I have one blue ball with tritium tubes. Hang on. Let me just find. Oh, here we go. Uh, I really enjoyed this. Uh, I really enjoyed. <laughs> I really enjoyed this, uh, and we're going to end on this note, by the way. But I, I really enjoyed this uh, round of communication with a fellow named Mike, and he he starts out by saying, "Mark, big fan of the channel. Hope you are well. I am interested in buying the Hulk. If you want to sell, let me know." Mm. And uh, I have no intention of selling my Hulk. On the one hand, on the other hand. I always find it interesting when punters write me vague emails offering to buy a watch with no monetary, you know. But if, if you guys want to buy a watch and you want to contact a dude selling it or who owns it, you should give them some vague idea of what you want to pay for the thing. Otherwise, in my experience, here's what you people do. What you people do is you ask for a million pictures, videos, all kinds of crazy shit, and then you make some stupid lowball offer. So let this be a lesson to anybody with a YouTube channel. If you want to sell a watch and somebody asks you – you know, if you're selling it, just tell them to give you a number. So I said, thanks for watching, Mike. Make me a non-binding offer. And if I like it, I'll send you pics. Which really puts most of them away. I mean, at that point, you get rid of, you know, you get rid of the idiots. So Mike, <laughs> it didn't get rid of Mike, however. <laughs> so here's Mike's idiotic response. $11,250. You make $1,000 on the watch. Thanks. And uh, also, my Seiko Patty is awesome. Love it. And, um, and, and I, I simply sent Mike back an email which said, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was my response. And then his response was, hi, Mark. Well, what are you looking to get? And my response, he, to which fortunately he didn't answer, this did, this did put the period on the end of the sentence. He says, uh, you know, he said, what are you trying to get for it? And my, my final response to him was, I believe you are under the mistaken impression that we are negotiating. You made your adorable offer. I left, and we part friends. And, and so we did. And, and I intend to part with all of you people friends as well, except for first I got to look up and see what McKinley just sent me. Dan. I'll show that picture. That is a glorious. It's a watch. I mean, uh, Mackenzie, let me just say, um, I'm I'm seeing you know a little bit of hair. It's a little bit veiny. Um, <laughs> well, I'm not lying. 
and I see a ball. <laughs> That's my one ball. That's a nice ball. You have uh, I'm, I, I'm, you only have one, but it is nice, much like mine. Your watch is blue. Your ball is orange. I'm kind of built the That's other right. way around, but you know, it takes a. Is that is that right? That, that, that's a that, that's a well it's a well turned ankle. Well, guys, listen. Uh, I want to thank you for having joined me. I have such an illustrious crew of people well, here. I think the pontiff will be going on shortly. Actually, there's a great question by Armando. Let's re let's address that real quick. Yeah, go ahead, Clyde. <laughs> I know you're trying to keep us on, but apparently the uh, the, the pontiff is not on yet, so I don't mind. Hey, you think the Tudor Black Bay GMT? Okay. That <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> it's nice enough to be a lifetime keeper, or can you self see yourself growing tired of it? If not, what do you think the export is black as an alternative? We'll go right ahead. Keep going. Okay. Well, uh, I think the Tudor Black Bay GMP, I think it's a great watch. I think it's definitely one of the more interesting uh, Tudor releases that's come out in 2019. Of course, that came out in 2019 during the Basel World, I think during the third day. Basel uh, World. During the keynote of the uh, presentation at Basel World, I think it was the Tudor Vice CEO that uh, more or less did a nice presentation talking about the history and the heritage and the luxury of that brand and of that piece. Now, it also it has, it has a pre. It, it's 40 millimeters, so kind of a classic size. 41. 41 millimeters, <laughs> uh, even more classic size. It has a Pepsi bezel, and of course, now that's an in house uh, movement, is it not? Yes. 70 hours. 70 hours. And also, so you've got almost all the classic parts of like a pre ceramic. But what's his fatal, what's his fatal flaw, Clyde? GMT. You know. um, oh. I can't really think of a fatal flaw. No, really? Okay, well, let's go around the panel. You, now, Clyde, Clyde, don't you want to dive into the uh, 40 and 42 millimeter <laughs> yeah, the, explorer? The history of? The 16570 yeah. versus the 216570? Uh, guys, I feel like you're trying to... <laughs> You have to I, I feel like you're trying to flim flam me. You have to talk about the 1655 and the 16550 first. Is Archie, is Archie oh, yeah. broadcasting right now? Is that what's happening? was worn on Everest. You just can't I'm, yeah. I have to go look. I got to look because now I think the pontiff is broadcasting. You know what? While I'm looking that up, you know, Bruce, tell me, what's the fatal flaw of the that Tudor GMT? GMT what's the fatal flaw? All watch, man. It's, it's like thickness. 15 millimeters thickness. in height. Yeah. So I think it's one of those watches, like, if you score a great mm. deal used on one, yeah, pick it up, have fun with it. But uh, I would much rather have an Explorer 2 than a Black Bay uh, GMT, personally. But the stud has one and wears it as his daily. Well, that's very nice. I, look, I think it's a very nice watch, but it has a fatal flaw, and its fatal flaw is? It's a Tudor. It's, it's not a, a Rolex. It's that, bingo! Bam! Thank you, gentlemen! Here's the thing, okay? Tudor will play with our affections. They manipulate us. You can wear in a brothel. <laughs> well, that's a good point. You know, and I've made that point many times. But, but however, it's a tutor. And what they'll do with those new releases is they will short supply them for the first like six months. So they get you all excited that they're going to be hard to get. And then just when you pay retail for one, bam, they release like hundreds of thousands of them into the wild. So, um, Nope. They they pretend to be Rolex, but they don't limit anything. They become extremely devalued just because of the amount of supply that, that they just dump onto the marketplace all at once. But they are very, very careful in that first six months to make it look like it's going to be um, limited in See, availability. I now, I don't know. Of course, there mm. always is avail limited availability. Hey, um, okay. Mackenzie, look it up and let's see what those are going for on Chrono 24 right now. We're all Four thousand. Why are they going on a watch recon? Oh, and that's the other thing. That's another Probably point. Thirty six seventy five. Yeah, and they just won't sell because people will not. They just will not take their fisting the way they should. So it's very no. hard. It's very no. hard to you know. They, McKenzie, what, what would you prefer? You think the uh, the uh, Pepsi, the the GMT Black Bay GMT, or you think the P zero one? Clyde, why are you talking so fast, Clyde? Okay, you're right. Uh, I would take. You're making GMT. me suspicious. The two of these guys. Is Archie on? Is yes, that what's I happening here? Reverb when I talk. Oh, I'm the luckiest man, man, man in the world, world, world. I just like to say, 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 say,
Be the luckiest man, man, in the world. world. Face of the earth, 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 earth. Oh, he's live, you bastards. <laughs> you, <laughs> so anyway. Archie, Archie Luxury is live at this time. So we are going to. <laughs> we are heading. Let me see. Did he give us? Did he give us the link? Oh, he did. He gave us the link. I, I don't see how you can say that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining. Wait, did he give us the link yet? Fabrication. I don't see why you're getting that. Did he give us the link? Yeah, I don't even, oh well, well, when he obviously, wants us, he'll give us the link. Obviously, yeah, he, obviously he doesn't want us on, so we should just continue here doing our own. No, nah, we're gonna we're gonna send the punters over there. We're gonna get the link in another couple of minutes. You have a limited opportunity. To send... Thank you so much for joining me. I, I've got a. I, I have to mute all the two naughty kids. Super chat, super chat, super chat, super chat. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Okay, guys. Little, I'll see you people over at Archie Luxury. No, Mackenzie, <laughs> thank you for joining me. Wrangler, I'll see you over there. And Bruce Williams, special guest star. Thank you for being with us, Bruce. I like Bruce. Let's play with Bruce. Bruce is cool. Let's hang out. Bruce is the best. No, Bruce. Bruce is fantastic. Thank you again. Hey, let's rub stream, guys. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs>